What's up my comic comrades? Recently Jeff John started a new miniseries for DC that I've been looking forward to ever since it was announced. And that is the brand new Justice Society of America book. Johns is easily one of the best modern comic book writers and someone who really understands the history of the DC universe. Which is why every time he's on a book, I'm in line to read it. In fact, one of Jeff John's best runs is his original JSA title. And now he's returned to the team for an all new era of the Justice Society. So let's see where he's taking them with this brand new JSA series that's promising a new golden age. Issue one opens up 31 years ago with Bruce in Crime Alley after his parents were just shot, then 13 years ago with Catwoman jumping out of a window, and then one year from now where the child of Batman and Catwoman has just been born. We are then taken to 26 years from now with the daughter of Batman and Catwoman holding a man by the throat on the ground saying, where is Dr. Fate? She's the narrator saying, my name is Helena Wayne. My father was Batman. He was murdered eight years ago by a common criminal no one had ever heard of. This nobody somehow gained power. He died killing my dad. Despite my mother's objections, I put on her mask and my father's cape and found the man who empowered dad's killer. The sorcerer named Frederick Vo, another nobody. Vo was never seen again, and the Huntress was born. But I was left searching for a way to honor what my dad has stood for. The rest of the world said it was fear and vengeance, but I knew him better than the rest of the world. I knew that wasn't right. For years, I struggled with how to carry on Batman's legacy, until I joined the Justice Society of America and used it to give people a second chance. It's what my dad did. It's why I was born. She then points her crossbow to the man she has on the floor, saying, I have a very itchy trigger finger, so I'm asking one more time, where the hell is Dr. Fate? But the man is soon ripped away by someone, and she says, of course, my trigger finger may not be as persuasive as my teammate's appetite. As we see on the next page, she's referring to Solomon Grundy, who is now holding the man upside down by one of his legs. We then find out this man is actually Falcone, who ends up spilling his guts to Grundy, because if he doesn't, Grundy will quite literally spill his. Huntress and or Helena Wayne then says, unfortunately, Falcone doesn't know anything about Dr. Fate's whereabouts. He contacted me earlier today after he saw a disturbing vision of the future. He didn't tell me what it was, but he said I was the only one who could help. We were supposed to meet so I could see this vision for myself somehow. Instead, I found Falcone's crew cleaning up a crime scene. The blood belongs to Dr. Fate, my teammate and friend, Khalid Nassour. Huntress goes on to tell us that Khalid was one of the last legacies of the original JSA who was still active. We then see Huntress talking to a Red Lantern named Ruby, saying she searched Faith Tower, but found nothing telling Huntress. Perhaps the witch girl finally carried out the threat to abduct Ken Nelson's legacy and kill him. Huntress says if Salem killed Khalid, we'd have heard about it by now, from Salem herself. They then continue their conversation slash investigation as Catwoman, Huntress's mother, looks on from far away. We are then brought back to this present version of the JSA as they're all sitting around a round table with Power Girl saying, Dr. Fate is missing, and none of you have done a damn thing. You're a bunch of inept, undeserving, privileged brats. We then get a narration from Huntress saying, in the years following my dad's death, the legacies of the JSA haven't been taken up as quickly by this generation as they have in the past. I convinced Khalid to let me recruit outside the box for an interim team. Karen still hasn't forgiven me for it, as we are introduced one by one to the new members of the JSA. We then get a closer look at this new JSA, and we see it consists of Gentleman Ghosts, a centuries-old spirit of a highwayman, Solomon Grundy, the King of Zombies, Michael Maine, the Harley Quinn son, Cameron McKent, the new ice school and oldest child of the first ice school, The Mist, and Rudy Sokoff, daughter of Vladimir Sokoff, the Red Lantern, and longtime enemy of Alan Scott. We also find out she's a living power ring, fueled by the mystic and violent crimes in flame. And then obviously we have Huntress and Power Girl rounding out the future version of the JSA. We are then taken to Catwoman talking to Elena, telling her daughter, you're talking about the offspring of some of the most dangerous metahumans that have ever walked Earth. Most of them never answered for their crimes. How are you supposed to take criminals like Harley Quinn Quinn's son, seriously, when they show no remorse for their past or their parents' past. How can they bastardize a heroic institution like this? Why would someone turn this into a team of villains? Helena replies, Dad gave you a second chance. Catwoman says, That was different. She asks how. Selena says, Because your father knew me, Helena. He's known me for years. These people you're associating with you don't know them. If Dr. Fate was murdered, chances are one of your teammates did it. Maybe the vision he saw was of betrayal. Helena then tells her mom, you think I have to make sure every one of them has an alibi? I'm not an idiot, mom. Selena says no, but your father taught you to be too forgiving, too trusting. Helena then answers, maybe, but if that hadn't given you a chance, I wouldn't even exist. As she walks into the back cave where she knows her mom won't follow her because of too many bad memories. The book then takes us to two days later where the JSA finds Khalid's body stuffed inside of a sarcophagus. Another mystery, Dr. Fate's body was was mummified as if it had been in there for a thousand years. Power Girl then mourns Fate's loss as Huntress says, they can help us, Karen, referring to the JSA. Power Girl then gets up saying, help, this was our friend Helena, not theirs, ours. Last year, these convicts would be celebrating. Huntress says, stop, 
That's not fair, with Power Girl trying to push her by saying, I don't give a crap, it's the truth, as we see Power Girl starting to turn green and be infected with something. Huntress asks, Karen? And on the very next panel, we see Power Girl get shot by Degaton. Degaton is a time-traveling villain and member of the Time Stealers. And we see he's holding Kryptonite, telling the JSA, I accelerated time, exposing Power Girl to Kryptonite for weeks instead of seconds, making her vulnerable to something as simple as my Luger. I killed Kennedy with this. The JSA then starts attacking Degaton, but he just uses his time manipulation abilities to systematically take them out. Sliding Gentleman goes across his own timeline, returning him back to the land of the dead, then shooting him. Rotting Solomon Grundy to Ash, taking Harley Quinn's son back many years ago to when he was badly wounded by Wildcat, so he bleeds out and so on and so forth, with only Huntress left. She shoots her crossbow arrow at him, but he just watches it fly by as he manipulates time, aging her to death. But luckily for her, Catwoman swoops in, holding the globe we've seen in Flashpoint Beyond, throwing it to Helena, saying, Find Dr. Fate. He can explain. I should have. Helena then grabs it as she's taken back through time. And on the last page of the issue, she lands in 1940 right in front of Johnny Thunder, who has no idea who she is and how she got there. Which leads us to issue two. Issue two starts off with JSA members looking at the snow globe and watch the Catwoman gave to Huntress, saying, whatever the snow globe is, it's incredibly powerful. Huntress then wakes up in an infirmary saying, I think I hear my father. I wake up expecting to be in his cape. I'm not. From a quick scan of the room, I know someone's gone to a bit of trouble to put me in an infirmary, meaning I'm not in any immediate danger. She then says, the next thing I notice is the medical instruments, the calendar on the wall, and says to herself, somehow I've been transported over a century into the past, to November 1940. She then gets out of bed and puts on her cape as she hears voices saying, she came here for a reason. She might need our help. Another voice says, or she's out to impress us like Red Tornado, who wanted to join the team. Huntress then talks to herself while walking into a room where all the JSA members are saying, my name is Helena Wayne. I am the daughter of Batman, and I carry my father's legacy as the Huntress. All of the Justice Society look at her as Jay Garrick says, hi there, I'm The Flash. This is the Justice Society of America. We've got a lot of questions, but first, you doing all right? Elena says to herself, his name is Jay Garrick, the original Flash. I knew his daughter, Judy. She had the same kind eyes. Jay then says, do you need help? She says to herself, the last thing I remember is watching my Justice Society be slaughtered by a man I've seen on the edges of my vision since I was 10. My mother sent me back here to find Dr. Fate. She said he could help me save the Justice Society of America. I just don't know what she meant. She then answers Jay saying, I'm a member of the Justice Society in the future. My team was murdered. I was told Dr. Fate could help me save them. Alan Scott Green Lantern asks Dr. Fate, can you see her fate, Doctor? He replies, of course, Green Lantern. Huntress then walks towards him saying, you're Kent Nelson, the first Dr. Fate. He replies, I'm the first to be called that, yes, although others have been burdened by the helm of Naboo over the centuries. Do not be alarmed by the light you are about to see. I'm going to peer into your timeline so I could share your truth with the others. But when he does, he's sent to some point in the future in Slaughter Swamp with his future protege, Salem Witch Girl. Dr. Fate doesn't know what he's doing there, but Salem says they're looking for Mr. Miracle, which they ultimately find. Once they find Mr. Miracle, they try to take down Solomon Grundy, at which point Dr. Fate is sent back to 1940 where he says, Naboo, if something is blocking my vision of this woman, can you show me the threat she speaks of? The comic then jumps to 26 years from now, the time Huntress is from, where her mother Catwoman is currently fighting Degaton after he murdered the JSA. He asks, where did you send your daughter? Tell me, or you'll join her father. Catwoman says, why do you think I'm here? And on the very next page, we see he tells Catwoman, give Mr. Wayne my regards, as we see her tombstone right next to her husband Bruce's. In 1940, Huntress knows something just happened to her mom, saying, mom, as we see Degaton look at Selena's lifeless body, saying, don't think you stopped me, Selena. It's only a matter of time before I find her, and a matter of time for me. Why, that's no time at all. We then see the globe activate, sending Huntress flying through time once again through several different points. And on the last page of the issue, we see her land in an alley in front of Dead Man, Khalid Nasir, Dr. Fate, and Detective Chimp. Huntress looks up, saying, Khalid? He replies, maybe, like, do I know you? With Detective Chimp saying, I'm guessing we're all about to, kid. But how about we do the introductions over a drink? First rounds on Dead Man. And just like that, the issue ends. The first two issues of Jeff Johns' new Justice Society of America title were freaking great, and I'm already hooked. Jeff Johns is doing a great job of showing us multiple points in Justice Society's timeline throughout their history by moving Huntress around. It's extremely easy to follow, and more importantly, very entertaining, which has really become Johns' signature style. He just has an incredible talent for simplifying complex storytelling. Anyway, I can't wait to see where this is all going, and as a fan of the Justice Society, there's no one better to write this story than Jeff Johns, at least in my opinion. But what do you guys think? Are you digging it as well? Let us know down in the comments. And that's going to bring today's episode to a close, but if you enjoyed this episode, be sure to check out this one right here. And if you like all of our content, like, subscribe, and comment, it helps the channel grow. But other than that, I'll see you guys next time when I talk about all things comics.